and now we have a great session today and there is somebody who is coming very special to all of us she has done n number of shows and as our founder said she has basically taken the limelight of those shows maha jahid comes with 15 plus years of experience across middle east as well as in pakistan she worked in banking retail and pharma and insurance sector she worked with mashrak bank she worked with royal bank of scotland and she also worked with uh, altaya which is a retail operator in dubai uh, at currently she is working as people and culture manager for new country healthcare llc uh, she is also council member of international uae and she is a founding member of pakistani hr professional forum in dubai which is a quite impressive and a quite strongest one so without taking much time i would like to hand over the virtual stage to today's speaker maha jaid maha the, the stage is all yours thank you thank you so much santosh thanks a lot uh, hello to everyone um thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity the today uh, the topic today is basically uh, what exactly should one do in order to advance their career so without uh, you know wasting further more time i'm actually going to take you through eight different steps each step will not be very uh, detailed it will be brief but it will teach each and every one which is you know new professionals or uh, current professionals Uh, that what exactly are the things that they can um, do in order to make sure that their career advancement takes place so uh, the first one is to actually plan it uh, the moment you actually write down as to what success looks for you that's the time when you as an individual as a professional understand that what exactly uh, is your success story each one of us um, develop our own success stories so the best thing to do is to make a one year plan five year plan and 10 year plan and the moment we do that um you know because of course times change we 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 all learned quite a lot from covid so uh, whatever plan we had made maybe in 2019 was not applicable in 2021 or 2020 so that's why it's very important to have flexible uh, you can say um approach towards it however have a base where you say that okay you know what uh, this is exactly what i'll do and you chart it out now once you chart it out you will know where exactly you are in your career right now and where do you want to be in the next 5 or 10 years uh the second point is to set goals um set goals and create a plan to achieve them so until and unless you do not have um you know a goal you will not have a plan and until you don't you don't have a plan you won't have a goal and that's that's why both of them go hand in hand and that's what makes it very important to use them together so Uh, how you will achieve success is by of course following that certain goal uh, with that certain plan and again um, once you strive for that goal you will eventually reach that certain target and you will have that certain timeline through which you can actually achieve that certain goal so again there's no uh, there's no limit to short term plans uh, because the more the merrier uh, because the more short term plans you have it will be much easier for you to then uh, customize them uh, as per the you know time of need and the moment you do that you will know that okay you know what um this is these are the five things that i had in mind and if i don't choose one or two i still have the choice of three and four and five in order to actually reach my uh, you know career road map so the more detailed your plan is uh, it is much it's going to be much easier for yourself to track your growth uh, the third one is competence um, will not alone get you what you want so you have to be more open to your line manager so the key over here is to communicate 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 so the moment you have that relationship management with your line manager or your team members uh, mostly line manager because of of course it's for career growth uh, but the growth can be both ways it can be lateral it can be uh, uh, in the other way uh, therefore you you need to make sure that your relationships are are the most important in the career place that you're working in now it's not just the organization it can be people you have worked with earlier it can be people who you know you are currently working with it can be people who you might work with in future but for now when we talk about the present it's definitely your line manager so line managers are also humans they also will not be uh, always uh, knowing that you are waiting for a promotion um so again you have to make sure um that you your management notices you whenever you do good work you have to make sure you blow your own trumpet because until unless you don't do that um too often employees feel that the manager will know and then he or she will uh, you know just come to me and say that you're promoted um well uh, managers are also very busy so that's the reason why if you shine you shine with yourself and then you show that you shine so until unless you don't show that you shine um 
nobody will notice you. And that's why it's very important to, uh, you can say, make them notice your good work. And, um, and then, of course, take them in partnership and, you know, grow your career accordingly. Uh, again, uh, the fourth point is become an entrepreneur. So don't view your job as a long, uh, as a, you can say, as a permanent uh, gig. View it as something which is, um, which is like a long-term consultancy. So then you see yourself as a consultant uh, to a certain job role. May it be IT, may it be HR, may it be finance, operations, sales, anything you are in. If you see yourself as a consultant or as an advisor, you will actually feel uh, that you, uh, you can say, run the show. Uh, until unless you don't feel or you make yourself feel that you run the show, you will not be able to show that to the others, right? So at the end of the day, um, no organizations right now give guarantee of long-term or lifetime employment, right? Again, I will talk about the changing times. I'll talk about recession. But having said all of that, you have to be your own driver of change. So until unless it's uh, it's very until you are not satisfied with your own self, and until unless you will not um, think that it's important for you uh, to be feeling as a contractor with a portfolio. Um, instead of being just a loyal employee, you will not be able to actually learn more. So with the time, when you feel yourself as a contractor, as a consultant, you will, you will know that you have to do excellent work. No matter what happens, every day has to be an excellent work day in which you yourself will, will learn uh, a lot. And the moment you learn a lot for, from each position that you work in, you will actually be ready to hop into a new job role if desired. And um, if not desired, then you can still grow within the organization because then you will actually shine. The fifth point, uh, take some career development risks. A lot of people, I, I feel that don't take those career development risks. And that's why what happens is this, they get stagnated in their current roles. They, um, they don't talk uh, to their line managers. They don't uh, you know, uh, do new things uh, in their current roles. And that's why they feel that it's just a job, which is like a nine to five, and it's just paying them salary. Now, if you take uh, your job like that, you will never be able to grow in your career because, again, you have to seize the responsibility for your own career development, right? Because it's for your own self. It's not for your manager or your employer. It's for your own, own self. So that's why it's very important to understand that you don't need to waste time if you are not growing somewhere. So what you need to do, again, um, don't wait for the company to actually grow you. Uh, make sure that you when, they, when you have charted a career path for yourself and you feel that the employer, for example, is not growing you in two years time and you yourself has, say, targeted that, OK, no, I want to reach, say, um, the vice president level at the age of 32, then uh, for yourself, you know that, OK, if, if this current employer is not doing it, then maybe somebody else will, because you yourself know that you have the abilities and capabilities of actually making the organization wow no matter what uh, you can say area that you work in. Sixth and the most, most, most important. Network, network, network. I will repeat, network, network, network. Even if you are not looking for a job, even if you are not looking for a job, even if you don't want a job, you have to network. Because this network, when you develop, starts from the time when you start schooling. OK? This, de this uh, network develops uh, when you are in your college. This network develops when you start your first job. This network goes on and on and on with each employer that you work with. It can be your teachers. It can be your friends. It can be your colleagues. It can be anyone and everyone that you know of. So um, I usually give an example of uh, the Gallup Strength Finder where um, you know, there's, a, there's a competency which is uh, called WU. Uh, Wu means that you have met people um, for the first time and you have met people um, for the first time, but they don't feel that you have met them for the first time. So you have to create that and every human has that in them. So we, we say we have introverts and we have extroverts. Yes, we do. However, each human uh, is a social animal and humans want to meet new humans. Uh, and that's what triggers, you can say, new electrolytes in our brain as well. And we think in a more different way when we meet people from different backgrounds. So it's very important to create that. And I can give you my own example. How I created that was also through, you can say, various different networks, along with becoming um, part of Internations. So Internations is a platform for expatriates, which are across the globe, no matter which country you go in, which uh, area you live in, you will actually, if you are part of Internations, you can join Internations anywhere in the world. So this, uh, this is one of the platforms I can give an example of, which through which you can actually create that network. 
so again, at the end of the day, um, trade organizations, uh, churches, alumni associates, all these places, uh, you know, are, are places where you um, you will build your network. So remember that job security comes and goes all the time, right? But your solid network of valuable contacts and valuable uh, people is what matters the most. Because at the end of the day, those valuable people know that what your potential is. And they can always be a source to, you can say, help you out. Um, you know, uh, even think of a new venture for yourself. Like I can give you an example of a friend of mine who lost his job, but he went into his own venture and he became a singer. So, you know, he he nurtured his own, uh, you can say, talent. And he said, you know what? I don't need to work for anyone. I can actually play music and earn money out of it. And that's what he started doing. So his plan five years back might be very different. And uh, five years later was absolutely different because you also discover yourself as a human and as an individual. So the only way to advance your career, no matter what your goal is, is to have help and support from others. Okay, seven, uh, which is the second last one. Pick it until you make it. Well, I will rephrase it. I will say, keep it positive. So the moment you feel um, inconfident about any, uh, you can say, project that you have been given or anything that you feel that you cannot uh, complete, uh, self-doubt is something that literally, you know, spreads in you like uh, cancer, literally. So that's why you have to always keep it positive. So the moment you start thinking negative, you will attract negative. So always think positive so, so that you can attract positive. So it's, it's the law of attraction, basically, that always, um, you know, keep it positive and find yourself, uh, you know, in circumstances which are very tough. Um, look at the other people who have tougher lives then, okay? And then you'll stop complaining. So show gratitude because gratitude is something which, which will actually build your resilience. And you will say, okay, you know what? Um, I am still in a better position and I, I know I can still do it. So push yourself and stay positive. I know it's not a very easy thing to do, but surround yourself with positive people. The best thing to do is stay positive is also to surround yourself with positive people. So um, uh, the last point, which is the eighth point, is fill your life with a combination of work, education, and fun. So the moment you only work, you you become lethargic. The only uh, the moment you only have fun, you spend a lot of money. And the the moment you only study, you become a nerd, right? So you you don't want uh, you know any one of uh, you can say more of one. You want a combination of all three, because at the end of the day, those who have mastered the art of combining education, career, and leisure throughout their lives, they seize each day and make it their own. I would end my note by saying, the happiest professionals are those who understand their work and what it takes to do a job good. Uh, this comes from a combination of technical competence and knowing exactly what the management or the customers or the employees want. Um, as quality experts would say, they do, they do the job right the first time. With that, I will end my note. I hope I did not take too much time and I hope it was crisp and uh, helpful. Okay, Maha, that was like uh, uh, what I would say. You are giving some very good antibiotic pills and like you know, very sort of what exactly people need in a very short span of time. But <laughs> not to say that I mean you have covered some of not some of some of the very very critical point for a job seeker, uh, mm -hmm. starting from networking, starting from positive mindset, and do it by yourself. Or you don't need to wait for someone else to do it something for you. So you will be doing for yourself. And uh, of course, uh, yeah, it was, it was some kind of a rapid fire. Uh, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, definitely, we'll have a lot more questions here, and uh, I would take questions from you. So, uh, the first question I would ask you is uh, definitely about networking. Uh, when it comes to networking, uh, people some way kind of a look for very immediate benefit. One, they say, okay, uh, why should I go there? I mean, what's in it for me now? Right. As network is always built on a longer uh, time sp uh, on a span as well as uh, with the long term uh, perspective. So can you just give me a little more uh, thoughts on like how exactly people should network and uh, where are the best possible place places to network? Okay, so um, like I said, networking starts from your school. So you don't lose touch with your school friends. You don't lose touch with your college friends. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, you have all studied the same thing and you will all grow together. And you might be in different fields. So, for, for example, if you might be, you know, an, an MBA in marketing, your friend might be an MBA in finance, and your friend might be able to push your CV in into that certain, you know, um, uh, you can say, um, organization. 
But having said all of that, I would say that always keep your network diversified. Um, so you would always have, um, you can say school and college, and then make sure that you socialize with not only people who are your age, always socialize with people who are older than you. Because the more the moment you start socializing with people who are older than you, your maturity level increases. Uh, like I said, your brain, uh, you can say, grows only once you get to meet new people. And then socialize with people who are younger than you as well, because then you will understand what the young generation also thinks and how they think. So um, you can say, I've got the privilege to do this because I have nieces and nephews who are much younger. And um, I have, uh, you can say, my teachers who are uh, baby boomers. I have my sister and brother who are Gen X and Gen Y. <laughs> I have my my husband and myself who are millennials. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I would say that um, you can say, surround yourself with people who uh, you can learn a lot from. And uh, definitely teachers would definitely, definitely be one uh, because those teachers would have such a big network of their own because they will have students from years and years and years. So for example, even if uh, you know you are looking for a job, uh, your teacher knows you really well. You are still in touch with your teacher. You call your teacher up and say, sir, I'm looking for a job or ma'am, I'm looking for a job. Can you please route my CV across to any of your you know, previous, you can say, students? And they'll say, why not? Send it to me. Because they are teachers. They're like your mother and your father. Okay, so they're like your mother and father figure. They will never, you know, have that, uh, you know, question mark. They will always be helpful. Then always um, remember to stay in touch with people who you've met in networking professionals. Um, maybe, you know, platforms like, um, uh, I, would, I can give you examples of HR forums. Uh, like I have uh, been to many HR forums. And wherever I go, I always make sure I take my business card. And when I take others' business cards, I just don't keep them in a diary. I write them an email and I tell them if there was a pleasure meeting them and I meet them for coffee later. So it's I, I go one step beyond. Um, and, you know, this way you get to learn so many things and you share so many ideas. And um, uh, living in a place like UAE for the uh, past one decade, I would say it has really given me, you can say, uh, the confidence to talk with any kind of nationality and share amazing ideas. So that's how you network. I, I completely agree with you, Mahan. Of course, uh, there is one more. People always say, no, I asked this person. He did not help me. I asked that person. He did not help me. But I would say one more question to them. Before you ask that person a job, what was your relationship with that person? Or how long you are in a relationship with that person? Or how long you are fostering that relationship, right? Because we Absolutely. go to people only when we need a help. Like oh. I said, so don't only network when you need a job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you have exactly. to network all the time. And I believe uh, developing a network, again, is an art. It's not easy. It takes a lot of time. It, it takes a lot of, uh, you can say, investment of uh, emotions as well, because at times people don't want to meet. So it's okay if they don't want to meet. But at the end of the day, uh, when you build your network, always remember that um, you, should, you should think that uh, it's in your benefit. Uh, because at the end of the day, you will learn. No, even if you don't want a job, it's fine. You will actually learn when you meet, meet new people, you know, and that's how you develop the network and stay in touch with them. Send them birthday wishes, send them, you know, uh, uh, you can say Diwali wishes, send them Eid wishes, um, you know, send them Onam wishes. There's so many, you know, things that you can do when it comes to cultures. And, you know, that one thing I have... Um, this colleague of mine, he always uh, wishes me Eid and I always wish him Diwali. And uh, it's it's been a trend since I even left Mashrik. I mean, it's been what, more than uh, three years now. And we always keep in touch and I always make sure even to, you know, wish uh, Ramadan Kareem to, you know, uh, my previous uh, um, uh, departmental heads who are Emiratis. And they say, okay, Maha, I think it's time for us to do a Mashrik reunion. And, and then I say, okay, yeah, let's do it. And then we just plan a Mashrik reunion, you know, whoever wants to come can, you know, join. I'll just message everyone. I have all the branch manager numbers. So you can imagine there were 64 branches when I across, uh, you can say seven different Emirates when I left Mashrik. So, so I'm just giving an example of uh, how you can actually, you know, keep up with that. It's not easy. It's hard work, but you got to do it. True, true. Of course. And again, if you're just building your contact or just network, it's, it's not going to help you but have that meaning genuine relationships where you're really authentic and you're exactly. also giving in that relationship rather than just, yeah. uh, okay, I need to get to some person only to get something. So, okay. That was one question. Now uh, I'm sure uh, if anybody have any questions, you can just put it in a chat box to any of the volunteers or 
we can put it in a we can't put it in a public uh, open this thing but we can send it to any of the volunteers any of the hosts or co-hosts now i have one more question to you maha which is uh, uh, what are the key elements to do at work in order to build a relationship with your manager because people usually have an issue people say okay the company is good this thing is good that thing is good but my line manager is not good right and uh, they don't agree that okay i'm not performing there is something wrong with me no but they all all say oh no no that manager is not good and he's always biased or something so how think, do you build a relationship i think the most important thing is communication if you communicate every day there will never be a problem you know there will never be a gap there will never be a problem uh, you know there at times <laughs> at times my manager is busy in a meeting and i still stand outside his office wait for him till the time he calls me inside even if it's for 2 seconds but you know you, once you have that i mean i've big i worked with big conglomerates i've worked with medium sized organizations and i can tell you this much there's a big difference in working with both uh in big conglomerates you write an email you document everything in uh, medium sized organizations you actually go and you tell them this versus writing an email because you see um uh, every organization has a culture and i call myself the people and culture managers because i myself first needs to understand that culture in order to understand whether i can make a certain change or not and whether the change is even required or not or can i just you know nourish it and make it wow uh, so at the end of the day what really matters is the communication between you and your line manager and what really matters is the fact that um you eat food with the line manager very important food is the most important to communicate and <laughs> and i would say not just with the line manager it's to build any relationship for example if you have a difficult manager to work with uh, who is a cross function manager and you don't report into that for a certain person you just tell the person okay i want to try your cuisine and they will say yes there will never be a time when a human will say no to food so i uh, what i have learned is uh, you can say an art of uh, um, you can say like you say you know getting into somebody's uh, uh, brain is through food <laughs> and i think that's uh, that that's what makes a lot of difference because um, i'm a foodie uh, for sure and i think i've tried all the cuisines living here for such a long time but food is definitely that one thing that breaks the ice so you got to break the ice so you can bring donuts one morning you can say okay i've cooked this thing so let's do a potluck maybe you can bring something from your country i can bring something from mine and we sit together and eat together this way you know what we did in mashak uh, let me tell you um, cross functional uh, you can say things were not working too well um, i can openly give this example is because um, one of the questions of the gallup survey says that my coworkers are not, not committed to quality of work so we said okay let's play sports together with the back office guys so we were the front office and they were the back office so we actually did a sports event where we said okay you know what uh, this team will be the operations team uh, which will play cricket with the you know sales team and that game um, you know really broke the ice between the two and it became so much easier for them to manage the relationship uh, amongst each other that the complaint of he does not do this he does not do that and pointing fingers it finished so you know um, there are so many different ways through to break ice you know you can play sports you can have food you can communicate i mean there are there are endless uh, you can say examples of uh, building that certain relationship okay that's uh, in fact you gave a very good example of uh, food and as well as uh, kind of uh, engagement with the employees as well as the community so for me uh, i would definitely again i would i would watch for that again saying uh just don't keep your relationship only with work and office uh try to break that barrier and get that relationship maybe there could be a common place where you can get sports or you can play together there could be a place where you can get into community activities together there could be a place where you can eat together so that will give this will give a lot of leverage to build a relationship not only at work but uh, uh, anywhere else in the world so uh thanks yes. thanks for that uh, point maha most welcome Okay, I have one more question. So, of course, if anybody have any more questions, you can definitely uh, send it in the chat box. I have one question, so uh, which is say, sir, uh, would you give an example of your own career plan? What was specific goal and how you achieved it? Okay, so I'm a I'm a age person, so I do everything with age. <laughs> I say, okay, when I move out to Pakistan, I should be this age. when i uh, you know get my first job in dubai i should be this age so but um, on on a on a serious note i um, for my own self um, had the privilege of my older sister who's also an hr professional 
and uh, she helped me do an internship every year during my uh, BBA. I did an internship every single summers. Usually, novel students do it only in the last year. So I did an internship every single summers, and then after that, um, you know, my last internship was at United Bank Limited, where then I started off working right after my BBA, um, and then I joined the MBA program in the on the weekends. So that's how I started off. I started off two years earlier than my uh, all my uh, you can say classmates. So my uh, career growth, uh, you can say a lot of credit goes to my sister because she uh, gave, because of her, I gained so much confidence in doing all those internships and working on different uh, HR projects that by the time um, I completed my BBA, I was ready for the corporate market. And I was ready to actually start working. And that's the time when I started working. And even today, I'm, you can say, uh, two years ahead of my, uh, you know, classmates. Okay. What, what else do you want in life? You, you plan such a nice way that at least you you have two years of uh, extra cushion with you to work on exactly. even if things go wrong. And also one more thing I would like to share: I don't wait for a promotion. I promote my own self. So when I promote my own self, naturally either it's through lateral, like uh, in various different organizations, I only had one region, then I asked for another, then I asked for another. So I had three regions by the time I left uh, one of the organizations. Uh, so this is how I grow myself. Uh, I just don't look for a promotion because promotion is not the only thing through which you grow. You get the bonus, you get the salary, uh, you get the salary increment. Uh, but what are you learning yourself? Uh, the moment you stop growing is when you stop learning. And for me, I would say personally, it's not just uh, you can say positions. It's actually what I'm bringing to the table and what the organization is giving me as a platform to learn from. And I completely agree with you, Maha, because uh, it's not about just about the money or salary, because at certain point of time, you should also understand that, okay, if this is not working me today, if I lose this job today, uh, am I in a situation to get an, uh, another job in different skill sets or different organizations or something, right? So you should be always ready for that kind of a situation rather than saying, no, I'm happy with the salary, I'm happy with the job, and I'm okay, I'm getting an increment of promotion. Because sometimes people will not be able to even shift industries or sh shift sectors or careers, right? Yes, so, absolutely. I, I have a lot of friends who have who face that challenge. Um, of course, I'm lucky enough to be in HR, <laughs> HR, finance, marketing, uh, IT can go anywhere. <laughs> but of course, bankers, they always say, where do we go? <laughs> so, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's interesting how you choose your career as well and what exactly you want to do in your career. But uh, having said all of that, one more point I would like to share over here is this, that um, one of the land managers I had in my internship back in 2000, and three maybe, uh, I asked him before leaving um, the internship that if there has to be one career uh, suggestion that you have to give to me, what would it be? So on that, he responded back and he said, never run out of, uh, never run after money because money will run after you at a certain point in time and after, in your life, run, money will run after you. You don't need to run after money at all. So since then, I have um, actually taken this from him and he's actually in Saudi Arabia now. Um, but at the end of the day, this is what I learned from him, as you can say, in my student life. And uh, I have worked with that only. And it has worked really well for me. And I completely agree with you, Maha, because people, what they do is, especially in the early uh, career of their life, they try to switch jobs and jump because of money, money, because anyway, they're getting $1,000 extra, 1000 dirhams extra, and they keep on jumping. But at a certain point of time, they will understand that, okay, I have not learned anything in the whole process, right? Like they'll become so static, then they'll say, oh, now this is the end. So, of course, I would again uh, stress on what you said, uh, focus on learning and development your early stages of career rather than switching jobs too early or uh, just doing for a few dollars. Exactly. Okay. There's one more question which is on the chat box. Okay. What was your most challenging role or moment in your career and how do you, de how do you dealt with that? The most challenging role was definitely Mashrik. Because I think the role... I think uh, I think you being a HR people are directly pointing questions to you with your personal uh, I mean, uh, with your experience itself. No problem than... <laughs> at all. I mean, it's you know it's best to share experiences because yeah. books can only teach you as much and experiences teach you a lot. Yeah. So for me, the most challenging role was definitely Mashrik because uh, the role was not there. It was developed as a new role in the company, and I was given a score uh, which was employee engagement score of retail. Uh, which was pretty low and the retail head said maha i need this score in the next uh, six months and i had joined in march and the survey was in october and 
more than 300 employees did not even know why the survey was happening because of the fact that uh, you know the the managers of course they need to understand what's the reason of doing the survey so i had to uh, you can say do a mass uh, you can say learning for my line managers were the branch managers, the direct sales managers, the call center managers. Um, I mean, more than 15 department managers basically were the ones who I had to train and teach on why we do the survey. What is the survey about? What does the massive hierarchy of needs say? And, um, and what's in it for them? Because humans need to know what's in it for them. You know, you might do a survey, just tick, 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 and that's it. But you might also have a manager standing behind you and telling you tick, 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 and that's it. So I had to change that culture. And that uh, definitely was the biggest challenge uh, you can say that I had. And um, from a 3.80 out of four, uh, out of uh, four, sorry, out of five, uh, in 2012, uh, we jumped up to a 4.37 till the time I left them. And we won Gallup Great Workplace Award in the past three years uh, before I left. So I left them in 2000 and uh, I think it was 17, yeah. 17, I left them. So 14, 13, 14, 15, uh, 14, 13, 14, and 15, uh, no, 14, 15, and 16, we got the Gallup Great Workplace Award, and we had 65% actively engaged employees at that time. So every year was different. Every manager was different. There were two retail heads which changed in these five years that I was there. So uh, the most challenging and the most exciting uh, ro role in my career of 15 years until now uh, has definitely been Mashrik because it's outside the country. And in Pakistan, it was definitely ABN AMRO. Because in ABN AMRO, we acquired a local bank and then we were acquired by RBS. So uh, that was a very interesting experience because I learned at a very young age of my career, I learned how to acquire an organization, how to do due diligence, what to do, what are the things to understand uh, before you know you buy an organization or before you merge two organizations together. So we work with consultants and uh, so on and so forth. But definitely Mashrik. Yeah, I, 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 of course, uh, uh, I, I love the way you say it, saying it was challenging, but at the same time, it was uh, one of the best uh, times of your life, right? So oh, yes, was, absolutely. I thoroughly enjoyed it because I loved my job. That's why. So that, that's what happens when you take challenges really seriously and uh, take challenges with passion rather than yes. just saying, oh, just giving up. Uh, that's an amazing uh, uh, example, uh, Maha. Now, okay. Now I have one more question. Oh, would you like to be okay? That is done. Okay. I know I am the most experienced person in my team, and I deserve a hike as I am the highest performer. But they are hiring people at my level, but lower pay, and firing as well. Oh, what's the solution? Okay, hold on. They're hiring people at the same pay or lower pay. Uh, they're hiring people at the lower level, uh, lower pay, and uh, they're firing as well. What's the solution? So uh, I believe this is a senior professional who is feeling that uh, uh, she, is more, um, she or he is the most experienced one and she deserves a hike and she's the best performer. But what company is doing probably is uh, they're hiring fresh people or probably less experienced people for lesser package. So what's the solution? So remember that when you think of these things, think of the organization first. Um, think of yourself. Like I said, you are an entrepreneur, not an employee. Okay. Stop thinking of yourself as an employee. Think of yourself as an entrepreneur. Now, think of the employer as the entrepreneur. Now, think of the employer. What will the employer buy more? Uh, more, uh, you can say, resources in less money or one resource in more money? Definitely more resources in less money. Why? Because one resource can get sick, the other one will replace. But if this one gets sick, this one will not replace. So at the end of the day, employers right now, due to the change of time, like I said earlier, are looking at, um, you can say, more economical cost versus uh, expensive. Uh, so I was looking at this survey where they talked about hiring uh, patterns of UAE specifically, and a lot of, uh, uh, you can say, consultants said that we are hiring locally and we will only hire locally for the time being. There, there will no, not be any international recruit because of the fact that uh, the cost of international recruit is three times higher than the cost of a local recruit. Because, of course, you have to get them, you know, a ticket, uh, get them a stay, get them a visa, and so on and so forth. However, um, answering to coming back to the question of uh, the individual over here, uh, you know your strength. Like you said, you're the highest performer. Nobody can touch you because you're performing. So don't be scared. Like also, I said, as far as your, 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 you know, like I said, 
in confidence can grow like cancer so be positive keep it positive attract positive and and of course a certain a certain point of time it may not be just because of your skills or knowledge or expertise or whatever you are because even if you are the best person maybe at that time company may not be able to afford you because of the current market conditions there could be a number of reasons why people are right you see that's absolutely right but i feel that the individual who's asked this question is good at his or her work so definitely the the organization will not touch this person so don't worry you're fine that's a, that's a nice one so probably even before the company is thinking or that person is thinking that i might lose the job maybe company may not be thinking in that direction at all yeah maybe not <laughs> and if they do you can always give them options like you know you always laterally move maybe grow into another you can say career of your own within the company maybe look at uh, another position that you look that they are looking for and maybe do that certification uh, for that like i said time of need so yes i'm not saying that if you're a marketing professional become hr and if you're a hr professional become finance i'm not saying that all i'm saying is this that um you know keep it positive so that you attract positive and then if you really doubt it then talk communicate with your line manager it will be so much easier your stress will be released you will not feel you know uh, every day that i will lose my job today or tomorrow job is just a job he's sitting up there he'll give you the the money to eat food no problem life will still go on right uh, one of my teachers gave me a great example when um, in the middle i was uh, you know complaining about a very uh, minor thing and then he gave me an example of a lady who had a child who did not have a leg and um, and then when he gave me that example gratitude gratitude is the only thing i i do now because at the end of the day you know he said maha think of the person who has a child in front of her who she has to take care of throughout her life and she doesn't have a leg so look at your problem and look at her problem so my problem looks so tiny in front of you know it's human nature we all complain but it's just that um, you, you just we just need to look at people who have more problems versus our own and i think once you think positive you will never be uh, in a position where you will think that uh, oh my god now what will happen to life so and i completely agree with you maha because as long as you are uh... practicing your gratitude and you're grateful for what you have you will get more of that rather than you complain and saying okay i might lose a job i might have something wrong or something things might go wrong with me and everything yeah uh, there's so many people losing job and thankfully you have a job so i i think we should be thankful and and one more have. thing i'll one i'll tell you one more thing um you know everybody experiences it especially in this region so you just need to learn on how to keep on looking for a job simple even if you are in a job because you see the time to look for a job is when you are in a job otherwise uh, you know you don't look for a job like my father uh, may god bless him he used to say um, so why are you giving interviews so i was like dad i don't want to be out of practice that's why so <laughs> so he used to say but you just started this job so he'd be like it's okay i'm not going to another organization i'm just giving an interview just to keep my mind fresh so at the end of the day i think you should keep on challenging your own self and that's what makes you grow i'm i'm totally flooded and swamped with questions now uh, i'm still taking time it's, we still have time of course uh, and thanks no maha for uh, taking time and answering every single question in so detailed and uh, uh, no worries su- such a detailed way it's my pleasure uh, too <laughs> thanks thanks and I'm, i'm 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 happy to be sitting on a hot seat to pulling out these questions and sending it to you too uh, okay now how do you handle change management it's a question from one of our facebook viewer which is ajmal khan so how do you so handle change management change management is something we handled in uh, abn amro and rbs uh, when we acquired a local bank and uh, there's a very good book uh, it's called um, my iceberg is melting and another book is who moved my cheese so um, i'm sure some of you have read about it uh, my iceberg is melting is about penguins uh, in which the iceberg is melting and you know because the iceberg is melting they have to stay on that iceberg Uh, till a certain time and the more weight the iceberg will have the more it will break so then they they say okay if we jump to another iceberg and you jump to another one then maybe we'll be able to survive so it, it's more like a survival uh, you can say instinct that um, animals have and that's exactly how we teach humans on how to do the uh, you know how to survive and the who move my cheese is about a mouse whose cheese is every whose cheese is moved every you can say second day and he's looking for his cheese at the same old place but in actuality it's at a new it's at a new place 
So it's just the perspective and how you train your brain. So uh, if you are, say, used to doing, um, you know, if you are used to picking up a glass from a certain location in your house, change it. Because this way, you will always be ready for change. Because until and unless you don't get out of your comfort zone, you will not be able to, um, you can say, feel fresh. Like I keep on changing the furniture location. I feel I believe in the Feng Shui theory. I don't know whether um, you guys know of the Feng Shui theory. It's a Chinese theory. If you don't know of it, read about it, and you'll get to know, uh, you know, how interesting it is uh, because it actually te te it, uh, teaches you what to keep where in your house in order to keep your uh, your thoughts clear and your thoughts clean. So I completely agree with you, Mahan. I, I also believe that people should also keep on doing this change management even at the smaller things on a daily basis because if you practice it on a daily basis then you'll not feel the change right exactly so for, it, it could be changing your book it could be changing your glass it could be something so that they'll not say that they'll by psychologically only they'll know that okay for me it's fine i'm not adapted to one single thing or one single law way i like what anita just said she said brush your teeth with the left hand not with exactly. the right hand. keep on exactly. changing things. <laughs> yeah yeah, That's because right. at that point of time, your, your mind will agree that, okay, I can do things in any way. I mean, like, you don't need exactly. to Exactly. Like, I keep on changing my brands as well. I mean, she's talking about toothpaste. I keep on changing my toothpaste brand just to try new things. But yeah, change is inevitable. And you have to be ready for change at all times because it will always come. Only make sure, Anita, you change the brush, but don't go and brush somebody else's teeth. <laughs> okay. That's Thanks for thanks thanks for sharing those two uh, book references, Maha. Of course, both of the books are uh, really great ones. Uh, when you have an experience gap in your CV and that gap is due to hunting for a job, how will the HR or the hiring manager understand this? It's very normal to have a gap these days. Absolutely, be so open and honest about it. You don't need to lie about anything. Tell them you were looking for a job in the middle. And in that certain time, don't just look for a job. Do something else as well. Maybe do a certification, maybe do a course, so that the other person who's sitting in front of you on the opposite side of the table knows that you don't waste time. Remember the point I talked about, about wasting time? So time is the essence. So don't waste your time and make sure that you use it, um, you can say, in the best possible uh, manner. Start volunteer work. Do volunteer work somewhere. If you don't want to study, it's okay. Do volunteer work somewhere. But... You know, just give something back to the community in some way. I, I completely agree with you, Maha. Especially, I can see, especially in our volunteer groups itself, and uh, even uh, part of Brain City, a part of Empowerment Talks, uh, people are engaged so much in their volunteer work and they're learning. And if I see now, some of them completely developed into a different career altogether just by doing whatever they're doing in the volunteer work or the passion they're following. Exactly. Right? Especially during the last because COVID times. I have seen you you're on mute again Sandeep. yeah I, 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 no no i was just uh, probably i think i just lost the connection for a fraction of a second yeah but what i was telling was people just started doing things during the covid and now i end up like some of them become good video people who can produce videos some of them become good graphic designers some of them could become become good speakers and so many things right so I would completely agree with you saying, okay, don't stop doing something. At least you have something to show to the people saying, okay, this is what I did it in uh, uh, when I was not working, right? Exactly. I remember the time when I was working in DIFC and one of the insurance organizations and we had to gather clothes for, uh, you know, I think um, one of the floods that took place. Um, and then what we were doing is only sorting boxes. And it, it gave such a, you can say, um, sense of... Uh, can say it was a feeling uh, you can say feeling where you know you felt content after doing it and there were so many people who gave their brand new clothes they were uh, I mean and it, it was so nice to see people contributing so much and they were all coming in queues uh, giving proper you know uh, things in proper boxes and it was it was a very nice feeling I did that uh, back in 2019 and um, and since then I've been doing volunteer work um, as many uh, locations as I can do it in. 
and thank you so much for coming onto the platform too even this is kind of a volunteer work you are doing most welcome <laughs> you know i'm i'm the council of internations people ask me how much money do you get in doing events for internations and i'm i'm like i don't get any money doing any events i, I just like meeting new people that's why we do events the council for you can say dubai explorers group so we we basically explore all new locations within uae and we do small uh, you can say events and various different uh, nationalities come and attend those events that's something amazing huh? okay yeah. now uh, please suggest as my qualification is in hr but i have experience in the uh, experience of gulf in other field but i want to take my okay but i want to take my experience in field of hr which which supposed to be as per my academics okay please suggest what now the person says uh, he did hr but his experience in gulf is probably something else because people pick many, up anything i i think i would i might need some details on that as to how many years of experience is otherwise uh, that will help me understand and suggest further more so maybe we can take this question separately yeah to because i uh, this came from a facebook viewer so unfortunately i can't get him line online oh, okay here, fine so. so okay so then let me suggest something if it's 2 years in some other field you you can still come back in hr if it's 4 years 5 years in some other field i would say you you have already spent a good quality time in that certain field stay in that grow in that because the moment you change your field now you will actually again start from scratch so if you're ready to start from scratch then you can start from a hr coordinator's position and uh, you know move up from an uh, hr coordinator to an hr officer and so on and so forth uh, however if you are only 2 years in a, another field and um, you know uh, you want to switch your career uh, you can still do that but don't do it if you already worked 4 years in it okay. because that, you don't want uh, to waste time right yeah that's true and i think that this happens especially in the people in the gulf uh, because when they come to gulf for uh, which some professional background in the home country they move to gulf and when they come to gulf they don't get what exactly they want uh, so then they try to say okay uh, whatever i get is fine kuch bhi milega to chalega right like, ah, right let me try and see so then mm. only thing is they not be able to go back to their kai and do something uh, which is and again as you said if it's a shorter period of time and if it's if you're still on your early stages of your career you still time to change and uh, do this shift yeah. possible exactly okay besides learning on the job what other platforms resources you refer for your self development self development i would say linkedin is definitely a great platform through which you can if you get the premium account of linkedin there's so many learning uh, you can say programs on linkedin that you can uh, take care of um depending on what profession you're in uh, see what is a global certification that you can get because everybody is an mba these days so you just don't want to be like everybody you want to also then maybe do a certification uh, in your own field and see if you can become a member of a certain uh, you know body and from there on uh, you can either take a certification with your experience or you can actually study that certain uh, education and get your uh, certification so i think covid was the best time i have seen so many people doing different certifications and different courses and everything i would also suggest people to join brain city uh, we have different courses on brain city and uh, there are lot more resources to learn at brain city so you can go to www.brainscity.com and you'll be getting lot of uh, uh, new courses there and of course uh, it's not only about uh, linkedin uh, there is lot of udemy courses which are free there are lot of courses on courses that are free Yes. So you can go to various platforms, and uh, you have n number of resources available. Forget that because of Zoom only these days. Every day there is n number of Zoom sessions happening, and you are getting so much of content free of cost. So I would exactly. suggest be part of some communities that kind of empower you and be with them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Renita, for sharing LinkedIn, Udemy, Coursera, uh, Edex. Yes. Uh, how to bridge a gap between your age and your CTC? More experience plus less CTC. CTC is a cost to company uh, um, package. In in brief, I believe the package. Hmm. So um, it has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with experience. Uh, if the organization cannot afford you, don't join them. Simple, because you will not be a happy employee from day one and you don't want to be somebody who's not happy in your job from day one it's detrimental for your own self forgetting about the organization it's detrimental for your own self so if you feel that they are not paying you what you deserve then choose the right choice and not join them 
to uh, i uh, when you say this i remember a story which uh, i will uh, i will and most of the coaches or mentors say uh, you should know your worth because if that company is not worth uh, not uh, giving you that worth what you are exactly looking for your what you worth uh, then there are different places where can you you can really go and uh, place yourself exactly so like i have candidates all the time who uh, you know uh, if i make an offer to they will always say uh, you know i'm sorry i cannot you know join this because of x y and z and they then they'll say no and i respect that and i respect those candidates who actually come back to me with an honest uh, you can say opinion uh, even though uh, you know uh, i'm great at negotiation skills i can always convince them to come however at the end of the day uh, if if a candidate is deciding not to join from day one then it's amazing like today i'll give you today's example it was very interesting because uh, i asked for a reference uh, number and i was calling the reference he wasn't answering so i called the candidate again and i said your reference is not answering the phone so then the the candidate said uh, yeah if i have to be hired i'll be hired <laughs> so i was in a state of shock to hear this because again it's an attitude <laughs> which did not work for him for sure it worked against him however i'm glad that i got to know what you were about to hire basically because um, you know at times hiring choices can be wrong as well so it's good that uh, you know we as employers also learn a lot when we are sitting on the opposite side of the table and we as employees also learn a lot when we are sitting at a certain position if a consultant calls me and says uh, a position has come up this is the amount i would say you can uh, you know recommend somebody else uh, thank you so much for getting in touch with me when you have something of this level please let me know so at least you know if you have that own respect for yourself you will never undersell yourself and of course uh, maha attitude and being uh, uh, being uh, humble and having that humility is always work and no matter which place yes, you are in yes uh, exactly so you if you do like, like i said you have to be assertive don't be aggressive be assertive okay there is one more question which says would you recommend having a role model if yes why and who do you look up to in your career so i would definitely 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 say always have role models not one okay so uh, for me it's my father uh, may god bless him um, and it's definitely him because uh, i i know his entire career story but then it's my teachers as well uh so along with my father it's my teachers and along with my teachers is it's my you can say uh previous line managers and uh it's um you know so so i i don't have one role model i have many actually uh, i when i say many it's three actually uh out of it one is my dad one is uh you know my teacher and one is my um ex line manager i think you uh, you perfectly summed it up because you should have role models for different uh, purpose or different roles right you can't have just one role model and say i follow this okay for profession you need someone else who you really look up to and whom you want to be some day and yes. in life or in uh, of course in family there is always a uh, motivation from parents so exactly uh, tony robbins also recommends it yes then to i completely agree with you uh no in fact you know what your best friend can also be your role model at times so surround yourself with people who are positive and um you will actually then um, invite only positive and good vibes okay you're mute again yeah okay Sorry. i'm going to take one more question uh, i just want to take one more question here i hope i'll get it right let's say that you were earlier in different team and you had an escalation against the process which now becomes personal later you are put under his team how do you think i should take it personally as it will impact my future for sure um i'm not sure if it's the banking question or something no no i totally banking. understand with where this question is coming from uh, i would suggest that um, be diplomatically correct because at times you have to be diplomatically correct uh to survive uh because at times just being nice is not enough to and it also i think depends on the depend on the situation why what's exactly your situation at that point of time and uh, uh no, sometimes because this person uh, has already uh, had a conflict escalated. earlier right so 
uh, he or she has to be diplomatically correct whenever they have to deal with that certain individual and then become a friend through food simple <laughs> thank you so much and i i, I see it it comes from somewhere from the compliance or that kind of a sector thanks for that question okay now with this i believe i have taken most of the questions if not all if i have not taken anybody i still give you a chance so you can just uh, uh, send me your question and i would definitely love to take it uh, or if there is uh, anyone else uh, that's missed out uh, ren or avil or wenzel anybody please let me know if i missed out any questions uh, and i first of all maha it's not about uh, uh, whatever questions you have taken you have answered them so uh, efficiently and so uh, detailed so i appreciate Thank your you. patience of answering all these questions most welcome uh, and thank you so much and thank you so much for everyone who participated here and among the eight point okay among the eight point which she ranks the highest okay uh there is there is a question you mentioned eight points yeah in network uh, in network network <laughs> i think that will that will solve everything else yeah absolutely i'm thinking same lens maha yeah, yeah. network will probably <laughs> save the uh and uh, of course our network is the solution and if you are sitting here uh khalid what's what about your question uh, did i miss your question uh, let me just see uh, khalid if you can just to send that question again if i missed it um not able to i'm still trying to go back and pull out but okay uh no i have somehow i lost that question so we can send it again i will definitely ask it uh, otherwise uh, i'll not be able to take it as of now uh maha now uh, especially you have worked in the banking sector and i'm sure there yes. are a lot of people uh, uh it was there a lot of people having challenges in the banking sector aviation sectors because these are some of the sectors which is really affected during the covid Mm. so uh, what is the kind of a alternative you tell these people because most of them are in the same field from long time mm. they may not be able like people in the aviation they are stuck in aviation that they cannot shift to any other sectors too right or people mm. in the banking they may not be able to shift so what's your what's people, your people in banking can shift people can banking can shift into insurance can shift into brokerage can shift into uh, you can say um, uh, real estate so you know they can shift people in banking can definitely shift especially when it comes to sales um like i said for support functions like compliance audit risk legal finance hr they can shift into any industry um people in aviation for sure i would say um will face a challenge uh, however they can uh, still join you can say a small medium enterprise which actually maybe uh, develops those things and um if if there are engineers that naturally they'll face a lot of challenge but if there are people who can move into you can say uh, shipping instead of uh, you know i mean um, sorry marine instead of uh, aviation then that is also something that uh, they can look into so um, there's always an option i mean it's um, i feel life will always give you options so it's how you see them i completely agree with you maha life will always give us options so the only way is uh, sometimes we don't look at the options we are we are looking at the things what we lost uh, we are still focused on the past or uh, the existing conditions yeah. what we are in rather than looking uh, and uh, and that's why it's very important to sur- uh, surround yourself with positive people who make you think in a different way because the moment they like i gave it an example of my friend who lost his job and who became a singer mashallah he's doing so well now that he doesn't have even time to meet me and I'm like what kind of what kind of work are you doing that you don't even have time to meet your friends so at the end of the day it's like you know um, he challenged his own self his own skills and he followed his passion and now he's singing let's do uh, yeah and of course be with the positive people or uh, it will take you a long way uh, i have got a co- question of khalid uh, thankfully khalid uh, people skills are most important what personal skills do you suggest people focus on i would ask this question probably in the same way but uh, uh which is relevant to this conditions current conditions what could be the skills you should have for the 2021 or especially during the difficult times um the first skills you should definitely have is computer skills 
<laughs> because everything is online these days. <laughs> so you know, jokes apart, first first skill you should definitely have is um, a skill to um, to again have that relationship management of yours. So relationship management skills are definitely those skills which will help you out uh, in this you know difficult time. I'm specifically talking about people who are currently looking for a job and don't have one. For the ones who already have a job but are facing a challenge um, um, with various different things, I would definitely say um, for them, they need to find out where exactly the problem is. So again, ask yourself that question and find out what skills you need to develop um, for your own self because everybody would require a different kind of skills. So it cannot be specific for everyone. I mean, it cannot be generic for everyone. It has to be specific for each. So I don't know uh, if I can answer this question in a very fair manner, but I think it will definitely be different for each. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, Mahavati said is absolutely right. Uh, it again depends with uh, uh, what, is it like, uh, what exactly you're looking at, at what stage of a career you are in. Now, okay, I have probably one more question, which is, uh, which says, I have experience in account, but uh, I want to jump to other profession like customer service. How to face interview like a fresher in customer service? Again, the question is related to changing the field. Okay, go as a customer to any of the Ethisalat or Do's or uh, Emirates NBDs or uh, any other place and then tell me, really, you want to be in customer service? <laughs> Ask yourself this question again, <laughs> whether you really want to be in customer service or not. Because everything is digitized now. So there is really nothing known as customer service. You hardly see people with anyone who's a customer service anymore, right? Because everything is digitizing. So you have to grow with the, with the fact that everything will automate till 2025. You would hardly see people. When, when we were in Mashrik, uh, you know, in 2014, the vision of uh, the CEO was this, that he'll, um, he'll move out most of the branches and every, every branch will be a branch similar to the one that we have in the Dera city center metro station, which is called the iMashrik branch. It has not a single human in it. Everything is a machine. So there is no customer service. Maybe the only customer service left will be the call center. So ask yourself, do you want to be behind a phone? Uh, two, I completely agree, Maha, because these days customer service jobs are not, uh, even in the banking sector, most of the sectors, even for the banking, I mean, uh, if you call now Emirates, NBD, whatever, there's, you have your... Uh, uh, robots or automated uh, these things, right? Uh, yes, there's yes. no any kind of a physical person behind the screen too. Basically, it's short term. It's not the customer service will be short term. It's not very long term, especially in this region I'm talking about. If if the candidate is some pro or the professional is from some other region, then maybe he or she can look into it. But specifically looking at the UAE uh, region, uh, customer service positions will demolish in the next five years. And I think especially because of now doing the COVID and uh, when we are getting into too much of digitalization and all those stuff, the, the, the physical touch is almost lost and uh, that's it. So now we are exactly 8.15. Uh, I hope I didn't miss a single question and I'm very proud to say that. Uh, and thanks, Maha, for not leaving a single question unanswered. Uh, no problem it, it at takes all. I hope patience. they were all helpful. <laughs> And, and I know that you directly came from your work and then you joined the session and so much. So uh, thank you so much for sharing out your knowledge, experience, and most, most, more than that, the energy you showed on the platform. Uh, so before we wind up, uh, of course, uh, I, I would love to say a huge thank you to you for coming. Oh, that's lovely. Platform. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, we are in Dubai. We can still physically meet. Uh, but until this time, we'll be giving this virtual bouquet to you. And uh, this is coming on behalf of Brain City and the Dubai Job Center community and everybody who is gathered here. Thank you so, very much. So thank you so much for coming onto the platform and uh, spending time with us. Uh, I also thank the uh, thank audience who's here uh, just because of you we do exist and we do every single show here and thank you so much for coming back to uh, these talks uh, every single time I also thank uh, each and every power person in the voluntary team uh, who has been doing so much for the cause uh, most of them time when you're not having a job and you're still struggling to get a job still you've been being uh, amazing volunteers so thank you so much and I also once again thank the founders of the both the platforms which is uh, the Brain City, Faisal Ibrahim and Yash, also Mr. Avil Pinto for making this possible and serving the community. 
uh, we are on facebook we are on uh, instagram we are everywhere on the social media go and follow us uh, on every platform and you'll be able to see uh, of course this is our instagram handle and uh, you can search us by name dubai job sant and you'll be able to find us everywhere uh, you can also see us at uh, www.braincity you can also check the brain city youtube channels so if you missed any of the episodes and you can go back and check more than 200 plus episodes whatever we done in empowerment talks and of course 11th feb 2020 is our next episode that is dj h uh, career day and i would request you to come back again next thursday to log into this episode now before i close the session i would once again thank you all for coming onto the platform on behalf of dj h on behalf of brain city and see you soon next week until then stay safe and stay blessed god bless you and with that we officially close the session if people wants to be here for networking uh, you are most welcome and with that i'm going to close the live stream